The U.S. House is set to vote on a resolution Tuesday to try to block the president's declaration of a national emergency on the southern border. Democrats have called Trump's actions an overreach of his power and illegal. Here to talk about this is Travis County GOP Chairman Matt Makoviak and Glenn Smith from Progress, Texas. Glenn, will the bill really have any teeth or is this more a symbolic move on behalf of Democrats? Well, it's full of teeth and it'll pass the House. Its fate in the Senate is uncertain and probably unlikely given over the weekend that several Republicans indicated that they'd go ahead and vote against it and hang with the president. It's too bad because the constitutional uh, issue is at stake here on the powers, the separation of powers and the checks and balances and the con Congress's power of the purse, which Trump wants to take away for his vanity project on the border, which is not about security and it's not about drugs and it's not about anything, but it's like a haircut for the president. He wants to look good, so he wants to put up a wall and he's willing to change the Constitution of the United States to do it. Okay. So I hope senators will, will reconsider. Matt Makoviak, what is the GOP take on this Democrat move in the White House? or excuse me, in the U.S. House. Yeah, so this is actually uh, part of the National Emergencies Act that was passed in 1976. It allowed Congress to issue uh, a resolution of, dis of disapproval, and if it passed both houses, uh, and of course if the president signed it, uh, the National Emergency Declaration would go away, and that is the biggest problem here. It's not just whether Senate Republicans go along. You need, I think, four Republicans to join with every Democrat to get to 51 votes. Uh, the challenge is that the president would veto it, and so you really need two-thirds in both houses. Uh, that would require 20 Republican senators uh, and a, a huge number of House Republicans. So the bottom line is that this resolution actually does have teeth in the sense uh, that it would make a difference if it did pass and if it became law, uh, but it's not going to happen. It, the only question is whether it gets to 51 votes uh, in the Senate. Uh, my guess is it comes a vote or two short, but we'll see. And if it gets to the president's desk? He vetoes it, and, and it doesn't, it does, they don't override it. Okay. You know, talking about the central issue, um, Glenn Smith, the president's emergency declaration on the southern border is unconstitutional because why? He doesn't have the power to appropriate or reappropriate money already appropriated by Congress. That right is, is limited to Congress exclusively. The power of the purse is Congress's, not the executive branch. There's a reason for that, obviously. It's a separation of powers. Congress has these powers, an executive has these other powers, judiciary, et cetera. He wants to change that. That'd be a radical change. I promise you, if the, if the circumstances were different here, and this was a Democratic president wanting to take the power of the purse away from Congress, that Republicans would be proposing the exact same legislation to stop the Emergency Act. I mean, I, I, so I, I hate to see just the loyalty to the president over something this silly on the one hand, but dangerous to the future of democracy on the other. So, Matt Makoviak, the president's declaration on the southern border is constitutional because why? Well, if you look at where he's taken the money from, I think two of the uh, areas where he's taken money, uh, that he has the power to do that. Uh, and military construction funding through the Pentagon, you had the uh, defense secretary in El Paso over the weekend uh, looking, at, looking at this issue, and then the drug interdiction funds, which I think are coming out of the Justice Department. And then I think there's a third pot, and I think there's a reasonable question about that. It's a total of $8 billion. Um, you know, Congress appropriated $1.375 billion uh, for, uh, th for the time period that will last until September 30th. So look, I just think since, it's, it's, since it has to do with the, with the border, which is a, a federal responsibility and because there's a national security uh, justification here, I think that, that he's going to have broad latitude. But we'll see. The courts are going to rule on this. Uh, you had, I think, 16 states joined together to sue, uh, including California. Um, we'll have to see if those states can get standing since Texas was not a party to that lawsuit. So there are some, some legal questions going forward. Okay, there will be more to come on this one. Glenn, Matt, thank you both very much. Thanks. Thank you all.